morning, guys, and welcome to another episode of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments. Uh, with me, your host, Richard Beckson. Today, we're going to be talking to Vitaly Balasanov of to Costa Rica Real Estate.com up here in the Central Valley. For you guys that don't know what the Central Valley here is, it's San Jose, Aredia, and Abuela, so more in kind of the mountains and the city areas, uh, which we're starting to see a bit of demand for. Uh, again, as it's a little bit more built up, has infrastructure of hospitals, uh, malls, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's interesting because we've never done a podcast on this before. There is quite a bit of demand. A few of our listeners have asked. So I thought it'd be a good one to do. Remember, guys, if you guys do want to get, well, for me to have somebody else on this podcast going forwards or to cover a theme, just let me know. You can either contact us uh, by putting anything in the comments uh, or feel free to email me, which is richard at Costa Rica, REIT, R-E-I-T. So that's Romeo Echo India Tango.com. So that's Richard at Costa Rica Reed.com. Uh, and I'll be happy to get anybody on the podcast or ask some questions to future uh, guests that we have on there. So let's get started. Uh, I think it's going to be a good one. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Richard. Thanks pleasure. for asking. Hope, hope the same for you. Yeah, no, all good here. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. And as I'd mentioned to the uh, listeners beforehand, this is the first one that we've ever done on the Central Valley area. So it's going to be interesting because a lot of the stuff is, you know, there's a lot of demand for the beaches, but I also don't think people understand is the that living here up in the Central Valley of, you know, San Jose, Ready, Al Abuela, uh, you know, it's, it's a beautiful setting to live in. Absolutely, it is. And just like many of the uh, people that have made their move to Costa Rica and call Costa Rica their second or first or first home, I came here through the coast. My initial introduction to Costa Rica was um, through the southern Pacific coast. I lived in the area of Dominical for close to four years as I was working for a um, uh, one of the real estate developers that was developing a coastal area between Dominical and San Josecito, which is a one of the very scenic area where the mountains meet the sea, and I came in here on the cusp of a of a uh, boom, uh, a real estate boom, and you probably remember the 2000s, uh, 2004 and five, remember where, very well. where the real estate, real estate profession could have been called, you know, just order taken and a, and a phone operator, P, you know, you would, you would not even get out of the office. You were, you were picking up the phone, asking people how much they want to invest and tell them the bank account where to send the money. Vitaly, um, how different is that? It's funny that you mentioned that because a lot of people are making comparisons at the moment to yeah. back then. How different do you think yeah. it is? It's a, um, well, um, it's it's a lot different in some areas. Yet it's 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 eerily similar in some. Right. Um, the right now, as as you have done probably, and I, and I've seen your your interviews with my esteemed colleagues from the coastal offices yep. and everybody is absolutely correct the coastal offices are going through a renaissance area um, for several reasons that i don't need to get into but yes the coastal areas are seeing um, what we have seen in 2004 2005 that there are multiple buyers for the same properties um, the Central Valley, it has always been a different market. Um, Central Valley, first of all, uh, serves, you have a pool of the population of over 3 million people. So um, more than, you know, two thirds of the population of Costa Rica lives in the Central Valley. And the Central Valley is a very vast, um, very vast area because it, it spreads from you know, it, it, it has three different um, um, counties in it. It has the Heredia, it has the Alajuela, and it has uh, San Jose and, and the suburbs of San Jose that uh, where, where we're currently located and the area that we, we serve the most, the area of the Western suburbs of San, of San Jose, which is 
um, Escazú, Santana, Ciudad Colón, and going further towards uh, towards the coast. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of different offers, and the the coast, the the Central Valley market has always been oriented more towards the organic growth of the local population. It, you know, at some point, and as, as an example of you and me, and it still is, um, foreigners do make Central Valley their home base. Um, ma ma majority, I would say, come to the coast, but then we see a very, very, gradual migration. And I have seen that with the many, many clients of mine, uh, with clients and friends that when they come into the coast, uh, with coast, you know, we have, we are blessed with um, thousands of kilometers of, uh, of the coastal areas in, in yep. Costa Rica, and each of them presents something different. Uh, when you come in and to the coast, you always end up going to San Jose for one reason or another, whether that being you got to go buy some, do some shopping. Price, price, mark, price, mark, the mall, the, the, the yes, hospital. Price, price smart is, is a institution that you uh, attend almost religiously at least once a month. You make a pilgrimage. <laughs> and um, and I, I can't say enough about the price mark. That's and Costco. It, That's our Costco for anybody. It is. It price. is. It, 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 correct. Correct. Um, and they do a tremendous job. And you know what? It, it's um, it's uh, it does a lot of service and um, uh, for the for the coastal as well as the San Jose San Jose crowd because you will never find the parking lot of Price Mart empty. You won't. Um, I hundred percent agree. J jumping is. back into jumping back into real estate a little bit here in the Central yeah. Valley. I mean, again, it's going crazy out there at the beaches. Supposedly, you know, I say supposedly, it is going crazy out there at the beaches. It's you know. not supposedly. It's going absolutely. You know, but exactly. Is. So, what's the city? What's happening in the city? City seeing a growth and city seeing a growth, but towards more of the peripheral area. So, uh, there's two different modalities. Uh, of the development that is currently happening. Um, within the last 10 years, the city started exploring and introducing a new lifestyle, which is a vertical lifestyle. Yep. Skyscrapers, condominiums, high rises. Um, they, in order to accommodate that because the land was becoming so scarce, uh, the municipality has changed and made a amends in the zoning plans so we have the tallest standing buildings in Central America right now, which is the uh, um, Torre Leumi, uh, just being finished right in front of the uh, Savannah Park and the National Stadium. So, but that concept has been developing for the last 10 years. It's becoming more and more common. And a lot of people are choosing that lifestyle due to several factors. Um, one is that security, always a, um, a lot of people like to travel. A lot of people like to leave their place. So it's a, it serves for the lock and leave for purposes. It also gives you a chance um, to be close to your place of work. So therefore you don't spend a lot of time in the transit. And as we all know, well, maybe not the newcomers, but the, for us, the veterans, the roads here in Costa Rica, you know, we don't measure, um, we don't measure the distance by kilometers. We measure the distance by the transit time, how long it takes to get somewhere because the country is very compact yeah. and it could, it could take you, depending on the hour, it could take you 10 minutes to get someplace. It could take you an hour, depending right. on the time, depending what what's happening in the um uh, on the road and in several different factors whether it's raining too far i mean it just every every day every day is a mystery every day is a miracle um Vitaly, just talking i mean with regards to real estate prices in the central valley because a lot of people look at investment while relocating they also look at investment i mean again how have real estate prices changed over the past would you say 10 years in the central valley the 
appreciation has been slow but steady. Um, we have, the, and, and that's part of the, um, uh, where it relates to the security of your investment. Because when you're comparing the properties on the coast to the properties in the Central Valley, um, just purely from the financial standpoint, the coastal property, your primary demographic is a foreigner, is, right. is, an, uh, is a, um, a foreigner from any oh, a, corner of the world. We don't, we don't depend buying. A cash buying foreigner normally, right? A hundred percent cash buying. Yes, we don't, we do not. Uh, Costa Rica does not offer financing options for the first time foreign buyers. There are some private options exist in the, um, um, in the private mortgages, yep. but the Costa Rican banks, whether they're state banks or the um, uh, private banks, if you do not own a property in Costa Rica as a first time buyer, the financing options are gonna be only two. Either the owner will be willing to finance the purchase, yep. which is not uncommon. And we have worked and we are working with several property owners that are willing to carry a mortgage uh, to sell you a property and, and finance part of the purchase. Okay. So, jump, I mean, jumping back, I think, you know, again, the beach is more normally foreigners, you know, they're usually paying 100% cash, whereas I think probably what you're about to say here is in the city is it's a mix, but also is they also have access to local financing. That is correct. That is correct. Um, the local financing for the for the local individuals, obviously, is vast. Every financial institution offers various conditions, various rates. Um, the banks overall have done a fairly good job on not creating an oversupply of the money, therefore preventing the housing bubbles, as we have seen happening in some other countries, particularly in the United States, which, which led to the great financial crisis of 2007, 2008, when all of the, you know, the subprime mortgage crisis where uh, the banks were giving up money to anybody that could sign on the dotted line. Yeah. Costa, Rica, Costa Rica has been very, very cautious in that sense. Um, so to up, obtain the loan, there you got to go through several requirements and several I've hurdles. Done, I've, done show. I've done it. It's a pain in the butt, but you know. It's not. It's not a pain in the butt. Uh, it is in well, compared process, to, compared to other countries. It is, you know, yeah. they give paperwork. They want this. They want that. It's better. Put it that way. I, I mean, the first time I did it was like sixteen years ago. You know, so uh, I'm thank God I'm done with that loan. Um, well, I, I mean, 60, 16 years ago, it took me three months to get a phone line. So I yeah, mean, true. things have changed true. a lot. I can go in the uh, I can go in the kiosk on one of the many kiosks and get a get a get a phone line at the nice. spot. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can also get pre-approval of the bank. There are several different fairs, uh, housing fairs yep. that Costa Rican um, uh, construction chamber and a real estate chamber does throughout the year. We haven't done them, obviously, due to the COVID for the last year and a half. But there is about three or four of them throughout the year where different developers and the banks showcase their offerings. And you can go in there, choose from several different products, and you can get pre-approved on the spot. Yep. You're still going to have to do a, a, an actual application with the bank as, as one should, but it doesn't take as long of a time as it used to. So the actual loan application for an applicant that can get a, um, uh, can get a loan in Costa Rica could last anywhere from two weeks to um, two weeks to two months. Yeah. Well, jumping back, I think it's something interesting that you say, because I think that, you know, an investment in the city area around here, the Central Valley is going to be a what we would call probably a wealth preservation play. It's going to be steady. You know, I mean, just to give you an idea, 16 years ago, I bought a condo for 120,000. Today, if I wanted to sell it, I maybe be able to sell it for about 200 to 210,000 dollars. That's how much condos are going. So that gives you an idea over 16 years, whereas I'm sure something in the North America 16 years ago could have gone up tenfold, you know, but again, you see those in the US, in North America and other ones, these big ups, these big downs, you know, whereas here it's just steady. It's a diversification of your portfolio. 
Um, you know, so I, I mean, I believe the Central Valley is a good investment potentially to make. It, well, you know, it, as I said, Central Valley, I, I moved to Central Valley for several reasons, and I chose Central Valley for, for several reasons. One of them is the climate. Yep. Um, I've always been a fan of a mild spring-like climate. When I lived in the United States, and I lived in the United States for 14 years, I lived in the smack um, middle of the United States, in Nebraska. Right. Nebraska, two, two seasons, winter and summer. There is no spring, there is no autumn. Uh, it just goes from extremely cold to extremely hot and muddy. Have no idea why it's been muddy. We're not near any body of water, but again, it was ex two seasons. San Jose um, and the Central Valley in general. Again, San Jose is a, and, and the Central Valley is a vast area and it has encompasses a lot of different microclimates. Correct. For example, I live in a part of Heredia, um, which is um, 10 minutes from San Jose. Where about, has, where about San Heredia do you live in, Tali? In Heredia, in, in Cariari. I live okay. in Cariari. So you're, um, you're even warmer from me and we're 10 minutes apart, right? It's warmer down there than it is here. That is correct. That is, that is absolutely correct. And then if you go another 10 minutes and you get to Santana, the, the, the average temperature drops another four or five degrees. And I'm talking about not Fahrenheit, because I'm talking about Celsius, yeah. um, So which is significant. Four or five degrees in Fahrenheit is, is almost nothing. Four or five degrees in Celsius, it's a significant uh, temperature change. Correct. Uh, so there, there's several factors depending on what is more convenient and what is more comfortable for you due to your preferences or to your health conditions. Yep. You have a lot of choices to choose in Central Valley where you want to live. Um, whether you want to live in the um, lowlands or you want to be up in the upper in the mountains, because we are surrounded by by several mountainous region, uh, regions. Vitaly, what are the areas of Costa Rica and the Central Valley that you're seeing most growth in? I mean, is it Antenas, is it Grecia, Santana, Escazú? <laughs> statistically, yep. statistically, Heredia is the fastest growing. Uh, uh, if you uh, if you count the amount of the construction permits um, granted, yep. Heredia is the fastest growing wow. uh, county in Costa Rica. I never knew that. Yeah. Um, wow. You don't because Heredia is so large. Um, it, 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 you, uh, when, if you want to explore Heredia, it's going to take you several days to drive to every corner and maybe yeah. even a week's. Well, it's because Heredia, as well. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. Um, so uh, the um, Heredia is one of the fastest growing. San Jose is in the second place uh, because of the lot of the high rise development that is happening yeah. in the central area, particularly in the area of Savannah and Romoser, um, as well as in Escazú. Escazú has been developing steadily for it's, it's actually one of the first uh, municipality that has been established in the San Jose area, one of the oldest one. And Escazú has been growing steadily for the last 20 years, 30 years, that oh. at least for the time being that I've been here. I mean, it went from the pasture land to the sky rises. Yeah. This, is all, this is all in the span of last 18 years from what visibly that I have been able to observe. Yeah. Um, obviously, the prices <laughs> have followed the same, uh, the same trend uh, because we were talking about it, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you can buy a uh, raw piece of land um, and let's just, without naming names, but putting the parameters and numbers on it, you could, the land that was costing $100 a square meter, right now that same land costs between 300 and 400. Yeah, which is insane because that's more expensive than a lot of beach areas, right? It's close. It's close. As a matter of fact, there's some beach areas 
that you can buy real estate cheaper than you can buy in in the Central Valley. I was I was at Playa you know, Grande. I was at Playa Grande the other day. There was an 800 square meter piece of lot, lot about 300 meters from the ocean. No ocean view, but you could hear the ocean for 120 thousand dollars. I was blown away. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes. that's a that's a little cheaper than three to five hundred dollars a square meter, right? Yeah, but again, that that lot in Playa Grande probably about five six years ago, you could you could have probably bought for about. 40 or 50 grand, right? True, true. Yep, yep, 100%. Well, let's talk about that. Vitaly, if you were to go back five years and you had to buy something in the Central Valley, let's put the parameter of the Central Valley. You yes. had to go back five yes. years ago. What would you have bought and why? It's such a loaded question. I know, I know, but I mean, people <laughs> love to know the answer, man. They're like, look, if you had a time machine to go back five years, what would you have done with it? What would you it's such a loaded question. So can I start with what I would have not bought? Yes, then sure. Because the next go... question is, what would you have stayed clear of? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, I do that. I mean, just naturally, somehow, I, I, I jump ahead unknowingly. Um, if hindsight 2020, um, the the opportunities that exist in uh, in Central Valley that probably give you a um, the the upside in the investment would be a commercial property. Uh, we're seeing a uh, the city is being developed more uh, carefully planned. So the uh, um, you, what in the United States they call a um, um, I, I'll, 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 it, it it will come to me. You'll probably have to edit the, this number and and uh, no ma okay Mas master plan master plan development. Let's put yep. it like this. Like so um, the. Um, the city is being developed and planned a little bit more carefully than before. It's going to be a great challenge because the planning was not part of the Central Valley um, vision 50 years ago. But okay. as the Central Valley has grown, they started paying a lot more attention to it. So therefore, the new developments are being developed more carefully with a lot of thought put in, into them. So uh, with each development, Along the each development, there goes um, several points of interest, amenities that can support that development. So commercial properties such as small commercial strip malls that house your basic needs for your home and household, such as a mini market, um, a pharmacy, a dry cleaning shop, yep. a, a, a vet, or, vet shop, um so you would have bought things, basically things commercial. Commercial. you'd have bought i would have bought i would have bought a raw land um where gonna, the you're not going to tell me that you would have put a central commercial on it right if i had an, if, if 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 the budget allowed it i don't yep. think for five hundred thousand dollars right now i can i can i can buy a land and build a commercial commercial strip mall but um that would have been one of the choices, one of the smarter choices that I probably would have made if I had if I had that capital. What would you have um, not done? What would you have not done? I would have stayed clear from the retail spaces in the major malls. Yep. What we're seeing right now, what we're seeing right now, is the same thing that that the um, developed countries have gone in the last 15, 20 years. The, the malls are closing. The concept of the, uh, of the big malls is, is more or less dead. Yeah. I have one of, my, one of my best friends is a commercial real estate broker in, in United States, and he deals with all the major mall operators. So I, I, I try to stay uh, in tune with what is going on in, in that particular market. And the big major mall are being outfitted and retro outfitted into a housing unit, um, into a um, offices. And um, uh, so the, 
the concepts right now are more like where we where our office is located in Avenida Escazú, yep. which is a development that ha it's a, it's a um, development that houses commerce offices, residential units, and a a lot of open. Uh, open space. The you know, and nowadays with the call, with restrictions, with new protocols, health and safety protocols, the open spaces are becoming a lot more common and uh, a lot more in demand. I agree. Therefore, I agree. I think it needs to really be multi-purpose. Uh, as you were talking about there, because you just have no idea which segment is going to be growing, you know, because they're not all going to potentially be growing at the same time. You know, others might be growing, others might be, you know, reducing. So I think it's a great point. And, and we see uh, the, the this development was one of the pioneers in, in this concept. And we see right now a couple of the other developers are, are starting to catch up and starting to develop the same concept where yeah. there is a good balance between a... Uh, um, in closed space and an open space where people can spend uh, people can spend the time outside. And besides that, I always personally consider it is a crime, a crime not to have open space uh, commerce in Costa Rica where the climate allows you to do so. I agree. Um, I agree. So, I agree. That's, so that's I, I, I think I think the the trend is catching up and i think the people's needs are also dictating what the developers do obviously developers are very in tune and spend tremendous amount of money on on the uh on the market studies yep. and therefore we're seeing that the majority of the new sky rises which one would say you know well why would you want to live in a sky rise in the time of COVID? there's still people that are looking to live centrally uh, to have all the amenities, security, to have beautiful views of the valley that the high rises do give you. Yep. Um, so the sky rises now all have a walkout balconies. Yep. You could like the older model of the towers did not yeah, have balconies. Don't have and you yeah. can see that in the central. You can see that in the central valley all over. Okay. Last question for you, Vitaly. Last question. Yeah. If you had $500,000 today to invest, not five years ago, but today to invest in a business or real estate in Costa Rica, you can invest it in real estate, you could start a new business. Of course, it's not a competitor to Costa Rica real estate. Otherwise, I'm sure Scott and Todd would not be very happy. But what would you do with it and why? Because um, there are a lot of people looking to invest in Costa Rica at the moment, you know, and they've got... You know, I'm seeing that gaps in the market are anywhere for two to four hundred thousand dollars, especially in kind of the housing side uh, at the beaches. But like, if you had five hundred thousand dollars today that you inherited and you had to invest it in the business or real estate in Costa Rica, what, where would you invest it? What would you do with it? Opportunities. Um, there are several opportunities that present you, present themselves in the market. A um, couple of the opportunities. Um, looking ahead and looking for something that I can live off possibly yep. is to, to invest in the, um, um, an apartment complex. Yep. A um, small, maybe fourplex, sixplex, eightplex apartment complex that is always could be rentable, that generates a steady income uh, throughout the months. We're seeing a, a very, very good absorption rate for the rental properties in Costa Rica. Therefore, we're seeing a lot of the new construction that is happening right now. Um, so that would be that would be one of my probably uh, best bets is to invest into a boutique apartment complex, a smaller complex that can be um, that can, that could be generating recurring monthly income for the years to come. Would you do it at the beach or in the city? Hmm. Two different markets, two different markets, two different expectations. Um, I think overall, the, the beach does offer you a little bit higher return on your investment. However, the ups and downs of the beach and the uncertainty, 
the beach is almost kind of like um, if you compare it, uh, you know, a little bit with a Bitcoin. Yep. One day it could be $50,000, another day it's going to be $3,000 because it depends on the very narrow demographic of the buyers. Why I always thought that the Central Valley investment is a lot more secure is that we don't depend on the, uh, on the foreign capital. There yep. is a plenty of the internal Costa Rican capital that can absorb the Central Valley real estate. And it does. The majority of the clients that I deal with in our office here in the Central Valley, the vast majority are Costa Ricans. Yep. We, do get, uh, we do get some foreigners that come in and, um, and we started seeing them more and more right now. And some of these foreigners might be the ones that have lived on the coast. They have experienced the coast. They figured out that they want to have a pad in the city instead of paying for the hotel room. And that's, that's a very, very common trend. Eventually, people that have bought on the coast, they keep their property on the coast as a, their, their vacation villa or a rent, uh, income generating property for a short term rentals. And they move to the city. Awesome. Because living in the city, really, to be honest, I, and as you know, Richard, living in the city, I can see the coast. I can be at the coast in True. one hour. True. I can be I can be on the Pacific coast in one hour, or I can be on the Caribbean yeah. beach in, in, in an hour and a half. Or I can take a domestic flight and be anywhere in the country in 40 minutes. In 20 minutes. Yeah. That yeah. is correct. It's 15 minutes to Mount Antonio, 40 yeah. minutes to you know, Tamarindo. I mean, you can get everywhere. Uh, I mean, that's the beauty of this country. It's mountainous, but once you get in the air, it's very small. The beauty, the beauty of the city, the beauty of the city um, also is multiculturalism. Yep. Because you do get to experience um, people from a lot of different countries, a lot of different cultures. I, I've bounced all over the world. I lived in several different countries. So this is something that I thrive on. Uh, I thrive on. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy working with people. I enjoy um, uh, finding out and learning about different cultures and their customs. And in the city, you meet uh, essentially, whether you want it or not, people from every corner of the world. Beach does have the same thing, but beaches tend to congregate people from the same geographical areas, uh, seem to congregate on the same beaches. Um, so, I mean, you go to, um, um, you know, Southern Pacific, there's a lot of, um, for example, French Canadians um, that, that they created their own community and they're comfortable living in their own community. Yep. Um, so it's, it's, the, a mix. Uh, it really is a mix here in, the, in this city. It's, it, it is a great place to it's live. It's a complete, complete and beautiful yep. melting, melting pot. Exactly. Well, Batali, I'm going to uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, just because, again, I try and like to try and keep these, you know, around the 30 minute mark, because I'm sure you and I could talk Centra, Central Valley real estate all day. Um, so, uh, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, Batali, again, I appreciate your time. Anyone that wants to contact you, I'll put all the contact details in the, in the description. Um, and it's been a pleasure, buddy. Thank you very much, Richard. No keep worries. Doing what you're doing. Big fan of it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You too.